So to just start things off, I'm going to introduce Mark Harris, who will talk about classroom response. Hi. Thanks, David. Okay, so um, I'm talking about classroom response technology, which is something you may have heard of uh, referred to as clickers, is sort of the more affectionate name for it. Um, and I'm going to talk just a little bit about what this is, some options for doing that at SMU, and then also some of the ways that you can use this within your classroom, because um, one of the things we've talked about is sort of a variety of different approaches to this. So first off, just sort of what this is in general, aside from the flickering screen, is uh, it's a way to get individual student responses to simple questions. And I hate just reading off PowerPoint, so I'll try not to do that. And there's kind of two different sets of ways this is done, either via a web-based approach or via a hardware-based approach. And David is actually handing out, um, and Barb, some of the hardware version of this. Um, this is available uh, through Brad Bokey's office at SMU. You can check these out if you wanted to use it in your class. Um, and so we'll sort of start with that hardware option. So, um, so this is done through a software called Turning Point. That's the company that makes those things. And what you can do with these is put together little quizzes or sets of questions. So I've made some here. Um, and then you can say, I want to pull somewhere. And you'll see here, there is a way to integrate this with PowerPoint as well. So if you're a PowerPoint fan, you can sort of have, be going through your lecture and then have this integrated into the middle of it. Um, I'm just going to do the sort of anywhere polling here. And so what this is is the screen resolution is really weird for me. So um, I could put a question up, and I'm going to open the polling by hitting that little button. And it's giving you 20 seconds to type in your answer um, by using the little one, two, three, or four on there. And you're kind of aiming it at my computer over here somewhere. You're actually aiming it at this thing. <laughs> And you can see the responses is going up as it gets people's response. And uh oh, we're out of time. And there was our result. Most of us did pretty well. So, um, so this would be one really simple way to do this is for sort of in-class quizzing. Um, you can tie this to individual users, um, or you could do it anonymously. But let's say you wanted to check if students had done the reading at the beginning of class. You could come in and have a couple little questions like this based on the reading and just see how they did. And it can keep score. Um, of how all of them did. This isn't really a way I like to use this because it's the kind of thing I'd rather just do on Blackboard for simple sort of online quizzes and stuff, but it's one option. So let's go to the next question. Um, so this is something I don't expect all of you to know the answer to. If you do, great. Um, polling is open. And on this one, you'll notice I didn't put a timer up. So this is just kind of an open-ended question if we were doing a discussion. This is something I just used in class the other day. Um, it was a 16 millimeter film class I was doing. We were talking about exposure calculations and stuff like that. And so this is something where, OK, I think the students should be able to do this at this point. They can all respond, and then I can see the results and see if they, in fact, do know how to do it. And some of you are either know your film stuff or are making wild guesses. We'll stop and take a look. <laughs> Looks to me like wild guesses was probably um, the right idea. But so this is, a, this is a kind of thing, if I looked at this in my class and said, man, we're all over the place. We haven't gotten this yet. Where are we not getting it? And usually what you'll see in an actual classroom is if a lot of people are getting it wrong, they're clustering in a certain wrong area. Like, oh, they're all thinking it needs to go this way instead of this way. Um, so this is the kind of thing you could also do. You know, Raise your hands if you think it's this. Raise your hands if you think it's this. If it's in a big class. Um, this might be a handier thing. And also, sometimes you might have the student who is just going to wait for somebody else to shout out the answer and pretend that they learned it. And this is a good way to kind of get a sampling of the whole class and really see, yeah, you know, I, the people who are talking are getting it, but the people who are kind of staying quiet didn't quite get it. Um, so that's a way that I like to use these. And then let's move on to the next one. More responses than a number of audience. In other words, can somebody um, there's different settings. The way I have these set is when they, um, if you click one answer and then switch to another, it'll switch your answer, but it won't count both. So whatever your most recent push is, it would take that. You can also set it so it's someone's first answer and doesn't let them change. Um, and I don't think there's a way with this particular set to let somebody answer one, two, three, and four and count all of them. Um, that's one of the limitations I'm going to talk about. Um, so this is, this is something um, 
that I do in all of my classes with these. And again, it sort of takes advantage of the fact that, it's an, that it can be done anonymously, so I'm not going to come down on anyone who said, oh, I didn't learn this thing I was supposed to learn. But we all know we have the new university curriculum. We're in this big push across campus for learning outcomes. And so one thing I like to do at the end of all my classes is put up the learning outcomes that were on the syllabus and say, hey, how well did we do? Now, word of caution, we all know that this is not your actual means of assessing this. You can't exactly trust that all the students really got exactly what they think they got. But it's a good piece of data to see if they think that they're getting the material or if they think that this was something we really covered in the class. Um, I have a couple of my students in the back who have been through this before. And uh, the nice thing about this is, oh, wow, we achieved that successfully without even having the class. And I guess half of us didn't really care about that. Um, being over to, uh, sorry, flipping back into PowerPoint for a minute. Um, so this, these are some samples from actual, actual classes. And the reason I like this as opposed to, um, or at least in addition to the sort of standard end of class evaluation that you do online on Blackboard or whatever, is it gives a chance right while you're there to discuss it. So if I look at this, they say, okay, we did pretty well. Here's another one I asked at the end of a class. Um, I put this up there, and I looked at those results and said, OK, let's discuss this. And the students had some great feedback. In this particular class, um, the sort of what came out of this is we really liked the readings, but the readings were stacked towards the end of the semester when we had all these projects due, and it was really hard to focus on those. Could you move the readings or the bulk of them earlier? I said, that's a great suggestion, and I wouldn't have known that that was an issue for them without doing something like this, because nobody thought to just mention it sort of on their own. Um, OK, let's see if I can jump back into something else without, yes, OK. No, I don't want to save this. OK, so that is um, the sort of clicker software. That's the hardware option of this. And now what I want to do is talk about a web-based option quick. So well, I'm having all sorts of resolution issues. Okay, so this is a program called Socrative. There are other uh, options out there. And this really does not like my website. Um, and this is sort of the same thing, but it's done via an online system. So if you go to this website, Socrative.com, you can play along. Um, there's a teacher side and a student side, and it does the same thing either with your mobile phone. If you downloaded the app ahead of time, you can do it via that, or tablet, or laptop computer, or if you're in a computer lab, that all works. So I have set up one of my browsers running the teacher version of this. And I'm going to show the student version up here. And those of you who want to play can follow along. Um, so the one thing you need to give your students is your room number. So I've set up sort of virtual classroom. So if you log in as a student, type in that number, 156284. And I'll do that here, 6284, and join room. And so you could do this at the beginning of cl a class if you were going to do this sort of throughout the course. Um, and so a couple different options I can do here. So I'm going to be flipping back and forth. Man, I don't know why that keeps cutting out. Between um, the teacher and student version. So if I pop over to the, student, to the teacher version here, one neat thing I can do with this is I could do something completely unplanned. Like in the middle of class, I could just say, hey, um, I want to do a multiple choice question. And click on this. And this is unlike the turning point. I'm not wouldn't normally be projecting this on screen. I'm just showing this for you. So I'm asking a multiple choice question. You should have these options A, a through E. And I could just say, OK, everybody, how is this presentation going on a scale of A to E? So think 1 to 5, 1, being, one or A being terrible, E or 5 being great. And we can put in an answer. I'm doing the presentation, so I'm going to assume I'm awesome. So I'm going to hit E. And it's going to log that and wait. Meanwhile, what's going on on here? is I can see a live sort of feedback of how people are responding. So again, if I was using this as some sort of discussion or just sort of seeing if people are getting material, it's right there, easy to do. And when I think I've gotten all the responses, I'll hit activity. And the teacher side is back to this. And the student side, I'm back to waiting for teacher to start activity. There's a very similar um, option of this that you can do that's sort of a pre-built thing, which is kind of neat, which is called exit ticket. So I'll click on that. And the student option is going to ask for your name. 
And then some just sort of questions. This would be something that's designed to run at the end of a, set of a class and just sort of see how people are doing. I'm going to say, I need some help. What did I learn today? Nothing. That's why I need help. And I don't have a problem on the board, so I would just leave this blank or type something, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you can sort of create your own ones of these. This is just a sample one that comes with the program. Um, one neat thing about this, let's say you were doing this in a place that didn't, everyone didn't have computers, but a lot of people had smartphones. Um, one student can do this, and then when they're done, they can say, let another student take it, and they can pass their phone off to the student, and it'll recycle the questions and take that as another set of data. Meanwhile, over here on the teacher side, I can see two people have completed this. There's 21 people in here, and we'll just say one person just completed it. And when it's done, um, I can email this report to myself. This is a really neat little feature, boom, and it comes in. And those end up looking like, actually, resolution is weird, but ends up looking something like this. I get the names, I get um, answers to the questions. This is a quiz I'm going to show you in a second. And if there are scored items on there, it actually calculates their score. So if I had like multiple choice questions where I'd actually said, this is a right answer, this is a wrong answer, it'll automatically figure that out. And it'll mark the incorrect answers in red and the correct answers in green. And that was just sent right to my email from the program. OK. And then last thing is you can, of course, just like in uh, Turning Point, do pre-existing quizzes, so I can say, run one that I've already made. And here's one that I created. And then I have two options. Either, again, I can sort of set a timed version or let the students do it at their own pace. And I can see live results as this goes. And I'll flip back to student mode. And again, first question, it's asking name. And the reason for that is, if this is something that's going to be scored, that it can keep track of who's entering what uh, data. And this was made for today. And I know the answer. We're going to learn about all of these. Hooray! I got the right answer. Um, why am I here? Because I'm presenting. And I can't spell. And I already understood all this information about clickers because I'm giving the thing. I'm done. And then meanwhile, over here on the live thing, I'm seeing who is logged in, how far are they on it, if there were uh, questions with right and wrong answers, how are they doing. So you can see some of them haven't gotten to any of the right or wrong questions yet. Some people got one out of two, some got two out of two. Um, but again, this is just live data feeding to me that normally I wouldn't be projecting to my class. Got that. And I'm going to end this activity. Mark, can you do a student-paced quiz out of class? Like having them do it, what do you mean? Like, the, can they log in later and finish it? Or, or the no, this is, so this is a live sort of thing. So I actually have to have this connected to the internet and live up and running for them to be doing it. So if you want to do something like that, again, Blackboard would be the way I would set that up. Um, so there's a lot of overlap to what you can do with this versus like what you can do with Blackboard, and it's kind of, the advantage of these technologies is something live in class where you want immediate feedback and everyone kind of doing it at the same time. You, you have a, a system where obviously it's sort of like the clicker system, but instead of using the clickers, you use a, a, a different mobile device that somebody owns. Like students obviously, I mean, carrying around clickers, they can lose clickers and things, but most students typically have a laptop or some kind of smartphone yes. with them. And so can, is there a system that you can have on the laptop that acts like a clicker type system? Yes. Yeah, so the that shows the pictures of, of the responses. You know, if you ask a question and say, well, you know, what was that? Then they, would, they, would, they would then input it and it would show on some kind of graph on, on, on the screen. So you're, you're asking like some, a system like the second one I was showing where it's web based but has that same visual interface as the first one? Yes. In other words, go, go, go to SMU net and, 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 and then put the, put the answers automatically on the screen. 
I don't know about the SMU net thing. Oh, there's some identity as any net that they could be. Obviously, it has to be. Yeah, cer certainly, if the, cer certainly if they have some sort of wireless or mobile data connection, you can do something like Socrative and put a visual interface up that would show as people are responding or show the correct answer when it's done or wh however you would want to do that. Yeah. So, 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 so you can have it look much like the clicker system, the Socrative system then? Yeah, and there's, there's different systems other than Socrative. I don't... I don't use Socrative a lot myself. I don't know if you could get it to look exactly like that, but certainly, if nothing else, if I pulled up um, during the response, the yeah, teacher, well, so the, the, yeah, if I pulled up the teacher view like I did here, we actually were seeing the live responses, and I could wait till everyone responded and pull up that view and show all the students on screen. That would be an easy way to do it without changing anything with the view. I think my own experience is if you like that particular view of the clickers thing, that's a really that's a technology that's designed for that. There are other web-based systems that might be designed more like that. Socrative is just one example of them. And can you then embed this in a PowerPoint presentation? No, this is this is web-based, so it has so it's running through your website. Or totally independent, right? Correct. Although then you can you can have them you can have the data then sent to something like Excel um, automatically, but you. As far as I know, you can't run Socrative inside a PowerPoint unless you embedded like a web page. You could put like a link to it and click on the link and that'll take you there. Yeah. The questions? Yes. Yeah, so this is a good example of a problem and a problem. You've shown us some great stuff and you had resolution change on your screen with the computer. How did we today? But computers back and forth. So how do you resolve it immediately or why is it uh, Well, if I was going to be teaching in this room more than once in my lifetime, I would probably come in ahead of time and figure out what resolution I wanted to set to this. Also, we're swapping computers every 10 minutes here, so... Resets automatically, is that why it's doing that? I don't know how this room's set up, I'll be honest. Um, there, there is a default resolution for the projector, and it will automatically reconfigure your machine to that. So his display is probably bigger than what he wants. And so um, if he had time, he could have gone in and say, no, I want to do this. That might take five minutes to do that. Well, and we're also swapping it. So actually, we did all go through ahead of time. I did go through and set up my computer to work with this. But then we connected another computer in between. And when I connected mine back, it went back to those default settings. Right. So you're probably going to see that through the rest of the presentation. <laughs> Just go, so you go to display, change the resolution, you're done. Yeah. Yes, you have to choose the right balance between your computer, what it's capable of, and what the projector is capable of handling, and the refresh rate. So it takes a little bit of time. But it's also, it's not, a, if you're teaching in a class and you go in 10 minutes before class and set it up and make sure you're set right and you're not swapping six other people's computers every five minutes, it's not a problem. Right. This is an issue just that we're swapping through 10 different computers. Yeah, that's my so. Um, so just a quick wrap up. Um, some things that I may or may not have mentioned about these. Um, you can do them anonymously or tied to individual users um, through things like people inputting their name, or if you had the hardware clicker systems, you can assign specific ones to specific people. Um, as I showed, Socrative particularly is great for just spur of the moment. I, I came up with a question, you hit launch a multiple choice question, now and it goes, or you can pre-make quizzes. Um, one thing to be aware of is this is super easy to potentially cheat if you were doing this for a significant portion of quizzes or grading because somebody can just hand their clicker to somebody else or there's even on the smartphone thing it's like have another student take the quiz well I'll just take it again for my friend since I know the answers and he didn't do the reading um, so I found it's best for things like discussion based and things like that where it's in the students best interest to be honest so I can see are they getting the material do they have questions and stuff like that um, and lastly um, my own experience these are really best for sort of quick like push a button or enter something questions. You can do on both of the systems I showed, short answer, typing stuff in. As you can imagine, typing on those clickers and actually trying to spell anything would take you days. The functionality's there, but it's not really um, ideal for that. Um, and then last thing, just sort of comparison of the two uh, different things I showed. Um, you can read all that. I'll sort of summarize my own experience. The clicker system is great, and we have those here. Um, and available for checkout for free. Uh, I'd recommend you use them. Um, they're great if you want to test this out, like you just want to use it one day and see how it goes, 
or if it's a one-time only thing. So let's say the only time I was using it in a semester is the last day of class. I want to see how they did on the SLOs. It's great for that. Um, Socrative or some other web-based thing is great if you're going to be doing something um, on a day-to-day -day basis because you don't have to deal with collecting all this hardware, handing it back out at the beginning of class. Um, there's a little bit of startup cost at the beginning in terms of the students have to download the app or bring their laptops and be able to go to the website. Um, but for something where you're going to use this class after class after class, the clickers get to be a headache, in my own opinion. Um, the one advantage they do have, and I say this as someone who teaches in the basement of Umphrey Lee, where during lunch hour you cannot get a wireless signal because everyone in the cafeteria has stolen all the wireless signal. Um, <laughs> it's true. Noon, noon comes, the cafeteria fills up, everyone has their smartphone, laptop, and everything else connected, and we get no wireless in the classroom. The clickers are great for that because they require no internet signal or anything else at all. Um, if you're in a room like this where there's good wireless and people can get cell reception, then something like Socrative works fine. It doesn't work in my classroom because no one can get on the web. So uh, that's my wind up on classroom response. And we're doing questions at the end now. OK, let's move along. So thank you. And I'll dis I have a question. Maybe I missed it. For Socrative, in order to use a um, uh, smartphone, do, do I need an app on the phone for that? Yes, there's actually two, there's two apps. There's, they're both free. There's the Socrative Teacher app and Socrative Student app. But something like Poll Anywhere, that's just text-based. When I'm texting the response to the yes. question, so you don't that would work in your that. location. That what? Wouldn't work in your location. Correct, because we don't get cell phone reception. Yet. OK, thank you. Yeah. Do people are in your class? Um, my classes generally range between 10 and 20. So you find it useful even in a small class? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, th I, th I can see the value of it if you were teaching a huge class. Could be even more because I have an easier time sort of talking to everybody in the class in a smaller course. Um, but yeah, I find it useful even in there, particularly for things where people may want to be anonymous and not be, oh, I was the one who didn't get the right answer. On the other hand, I noticed the Socrative interface said it was capped at 50. Right. So if you have a bigger class, then and that's not a, a I think you can pay to get a bigger class. I'm just using the free version. Well, and I've got 77, and I had set up two different classrooms thinking it would get around it that way, but it actually just let all of my students log in. I'm sure you wouldn't want to do that all the time where they start saying something, but um, it, it will actually accommodate more than 50. How expensive are these clickers if, if you they get lost or? You know, I mean, I mean you can't system. buy extra click notes if you have a class of 70 or something like that. Then, and, or you want students to buy them and have them with them. I mean, is that a reasonable thing? I mean, I, I think they the, pay hundreds of dollars for textbooks to you know, these clickers. I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. And then they have to keep them powered up. I mean, it's insane. I, I think one approach that might be useful would be for us to invest in, in a service that's complementary students that um, have a phone and access would be able to use their phone with the same system using the clickers. So Turning Point has that kind oh, yeah, of capability. Make this your phone a clicker. Yeah, so he could bring a set of 30 to a class of 75. You know yeah, most, most of them will have phones. Yeah, that would be perfect. Yes. And, and I think so we're talking about sort of piloting that and trying it out and see how it works, because we haven't done that here with the sort of mixed thing, but the technology do we have sets of 50 or 75 or 100 available to check out, or what's the... Yeah, so I have a set of 50 and a set of 30, and then around campus, various departments have invested in these. So I think the physics department has a set, um, uh, wellness has one or two, education has a bunch. They may be different companies, but they're pretty much the same. <coughs> I'm interested in actually in, in working with one company and you know, uh, procuring their internet service, which is the future of their business, so that we can augment existing hardware. I have to buy new batteries for things, a pain in the neck, they're a dollar a piece, who cares, but they run out, you know, and do you really want to keep those things, people lose them, right. Beth had to walk around collecting them again. I, I taught a class where the, the 
they, they were packaged with a book so the student could buy them an additional $15 with the textbook. So I don't know if they still do that. When they first came out, that was... The companies create strategic partnerships with the publishing houses, yes. You should probably move on to 